Hey, good morning, everyone. This is Uma from iData. Good morning. This is Taylor um, from Volk Co-op. We're going to give it a few more minutes, and then we can get started. Sure. Hi, Taylor. I'm trying to merge the agenda. It looks like the, we end up with two areas, so I'm going to copy some of this down. Um, let's see here. Taylor, I added, this is Ed, I added a slide to the deck uh, for a short agenda item. Awesome. Thanks, Ed. Nice to talk to you, especially hoping that you're doing well over there. As well as could be expected mm -hmm. under the circumstances. Yeah. <laughs> Well, hearing voices is a good indication, at least. If you haven't done so already, please add yourself to the meeting notes uh, in the attendees section and if you have a topic you'd like to discuss, you can add that into the agenda section. I posted the notes in Zoom chat, and I believe that they're posted on Slack already. Yes, they are. And if you have any slide content, feel free to add those into the shared slide deck, which is listed in the meeting notes. All right. We can get started. Right. One moment, I'll try to share my screen here. Okay. So this meeting is being recorded and it'll be posted to the CNCF uh, YouTube uh, organization in the CNCFCI uh, list, playlist. If you'd like to share some items, just add them to the agenda and call them out if you're having problems accessing the doc and you'd like to add something, then I can add it or someone else can. Seeing a chat message, that's just mine, okay. And I think that covers it. So I think one, one thing to bring up for folks who haven't been attending, I'm seeing some names that I haven't seen on here. This group is for discussing any CI topics um, specifically related to CNCF projects. Um, but this could be projects that are focused on CI or tooling um, or talking about maybe problems that you've solved or you have questions that you're trying to resolve issues that you think would be useful for the whole community. And um, I think that about that about covers it. There's service providers um, that like packet and they do a lot of work with CNCF. So there's a lot of items where they focus on trying to help different, all the different projects. So I, I think with the community that we have, we can cover everything from development and tooling all the way through 
running stuff on different uh, platforms, including ARM and x86. So with that, seeing the first agenda item is um, on the litmus chaos. Do you all have a slides other than, oh, it looks like you're dropping them in. So uh, let's see. It was all yeah. right. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not going to take a lot of time uh, in this meeting. It was more of a question than, um, you know, a big topic. Um, we presented uh, about uh, litmus chaos in this uh, work group meeting uh, some time ago. And uh, we also went ahead and raised uh, a PR to add chaos stage to one of the projects called DNS. Uh, thank you, Denver, for giving us comments on um, uh, ARM support as well. So I think um, uh, we have added that, uh, the litmus team. Um, my question really uh, here is, um, you know, some kind of a coaching that we are looking for on how do we actually work with other project teams, uh, for example, CodeDNS. Um, we do not really know uh, the deep testing required inside CodeDNS. We are chaos um, infrastructure providers as a project. As you might have observed, uh, we are now trying to donate uh, this project into CNCF as a sandbox project. Um, last week, uh, we had a meeting uh, to propose it. Uh, hopefully, that will get through. Um, the whole idea here is uh, we want, we think Litmus will be useful uh, as a CI project to introduce chaos for a lot many other uh, projects, but uh, we don't know where to get started with them. Uh, we don't have resources to go and write chaos for every project um, that's part of uh, CNCF. So is this the right working group or how do you actually guys uh, work with this project teams? Uh, can you plug us there? Um, th those are really our questions, uh, Taylor and Denver. Okay. Thank you uh, for that, and thank you for the adding the PR. And I, I saw that you've made the updates that we were asking about for ARM. So thanks for that. And I think as far as the PR goes, um, we're probably at a point where we can review that and, and merge that. So maybe the other part is the the focus then. So engaging other CNCF projects. Um, right now, I wouldn't say that. This um, this group and meeting is covering that um, where you're going to be able to present here, and it's going to ensure that it's getting it to say core DNS or any other project that you're wanting to try to help add any chaos testing. Uh, that said, I th I think there's probably room for that where. Um, maybe this group could move towards something where if there's general CI um, that could help all of the CNCF projects, then how do we disseminate that information? And I think this is probably more than what we could handle in this call, but it's something that we've been talking about. How do, where do we want to go with this group? And some of that would have to do with, is it, is a working group the best option or should we look at switching this to be a, a user group um, or something else? So within the CNCF, there's different type of communities and they serve different purposes. And potentially what you're talking about may fit better for a user group. Um, and I, I think we need to explore that. But I'm, I'm happy to add, add chaos uh, testing is one of the items that would kind of drive that conversation for what the CI working group would do. And then in the meantime, I can say um, going, there's a, there's a few places. Um, number one, of course, you can go to all the GitHub pages or the, the websites for those projects. So Core DNS has a contributing guide and all of the projects have their own contributing so that would be one place that you can go. The Core DNS I know is active on Slack. So
So there's a SANCF and Kubernetes slacks. Both have a lot of the SANCF projects are going to be active in those. Mm -hmm. So if you want to have some type of live conversation to um, that would be one of the areas. And then probably the user mailing list would be one of the first places to start a conversation where it may be kind of a, a longer async type of conversation um, if, if you're wanting to, to raise that there. So the GitHub, which allows you to do like issues and whatever their contributing guides are, Slack for live conversations and then mailing lists. And right now it would be targeting each one of those. There's, there isn't anything at the moment that's going to come in and, and immediately get applied to all of the, all the projects. So I would say um, my opinion on this would be if you went to the CNCF um, main CNCF page and you start at the, um, the projects, I would focus on the graduated projects and then move th forward to the incubating. So you could just go down the list. So Core DNS is one and reach out to these individually. Okay. And you have all the links and stuff here. And I'd probably get some type of pitch on engagement that's general, but then look at each one of these. So you can see the contributing guide for Core DNS and those. That's where I'd start for right now. And in the meantime, um, or I should say at the same time, I'm interested in looking at what would a CI common group for CNCF be able to do for stuff like this. Okay. Great. Uh, that'll be helpful, uh, Taylor. Uh, I will reach out um, the common entries uh, of all these projects. Um, and then if you could make uh, the chaos testing as a common a topic uh, that might drive a more community uh, engagement as well, CNCF. Uh, our goal probably is, um, you know, we've been using Litmus uh, quite effectively and uh, to bring out the bugs or regressions uh, uh, in a couple of projects, uh, namely OpenEBS. Uh, so we think uh, at least for Kubernetes main project itself, uh, this could bring out uh, uh, a lot of value. Um, so if I go to cncf.ci, we see the pipelines, right? All those pipelines, uh, the, the tests for that, whatever have been written uh, in the CI pipelines, were they contributed by the projects or uh, you or uh, mostly they've been written by your team? Um, mostly I was interested in how well the project teams are interacting with you. So I, we could, uh, that could be a platform for us to um, at least advocate chaos testing. Okay. So um, I'm going to step back here. I can, I can go back to CNCFCI and talk about that as related. Uh, one of the things that um, to keep in mind is all of the projects are running independently so they all have their own contributing guides and they all have their own process and um, there has been some interest in what are common services that could be provided there's no structure right now um, primarily in my mind that's because the projects are left to run independently for most of what they need and some of the needs are um, quite different prometheus for instance does some pretty large scale um, performance and scalability testing. Um, Core DNS doesn't do the same type of testing for say their in integration and E2E -E tests. They do a different type. Um, there is, I think, some possibilities to do something like a service where you could say all of them maybe could get chaos, but that sort of thing I think would be much further out. So right now I would think you need, if you want to get chaos testing um, used by more projects, you're going to have to go after them directly. Sure. And then specifically with CNCFCI, the first thing to state is it's right now in a maintenance mode. Um, there's a focus has been moved to other CNCF initiatives right now as primary. So it's, it's, it's in a maintenance 
phase. We do have, um, we, there was some planning on the roadmap and the next phases beyond this, which would allow for, and, and, and prior talks, we actually showed some mocks and stuff what we were looking at, but would, would allow for adding more tests uh, that could be run. So it would be a perfect way of saying we want everything to do chaos testing. We also want them to do whatever other testing is desired and plug those in and have those options available. That's future. So right now, what you're seeing is um, you're going to have builds, compiles, builds, unit tests, which are either going to be running within the system, which is based on GitLab, or it's going to be all on the remote system. So Core DNS has their own <coughs> CI system. And if they have everything we need, including published status and artifacts, then we integrate with those and pull them. So we're not rerunning them. Then we pull the artifacts and do deploys. And then there's some type of smoke test. So very, very minimal tests to ensure that it's up. You can see that we have some failures right now. There's some stuff going on, at least on this set, whatever it is. And, and then the final, what we have here, which is you can see is, is all in A. There was a point in the past, it's been disabled for a long while, but there was a point in the past where we were running E to E tests. That would be, I think, what you're asking about with regard to what tests do we run? Those tests, where possible, what we wanted was to run upstream tests and some of the projects had ED tests that we could run, but it was very limited on, on which projects. So those were disabled. The long-term goal was to work with the projects so that we could have the people that actually know the, the details of, of the, um, how the, the application should work um, to have the ED tests that would run. And then we would source those and be running them across the matrix. So that, that's another future item. If, if and when we move out of this maintenance mode and start working on the other. Um, mm -hmm. But right now those are disabled. So um, some projects do have ED tests. And if you're interested in contributing like other types of tests, then I, I definitely think some of them like Core DNS, um, Prometheus um, were two of them that I could think of immediately. And I, I don't know, Denver, or, um, Watson, or if any of y'all remember any other projects that were had ED test, you feel free to speak up. Taylor, uh, I have one question. Uh, so uh, we are adding the PR uh, for the test stage. So will it trigger in the dashboard? Uh, In the CNCF CI dashboard, uh, there's one stage called uh, test. Will it be? Sure. So um, the PR that you're adding for this chaos um, stage in the pipeline that would end that will end up affecting um, the test. So as as far as the pipeline goes you would end up, um, if, if there's a failure, let's say that um, this is specific to Core DNS, where right now we don't, you're not doing chaos for all of them. But if, if the, um, this stage fails, then we would show a red failure up here. And then whenever, let's say, I'm gonna click on this fluent D. So this goes to the GitLab. We would end up with the console log on the job um, and the the stage for the chaos test failure. So it would end up affecting the dashboard. Is is that what you're asking? Uh, actually, the this uh, disable uh, test stage. So I'm asking for this. Uh, actually, I'm adding that uh, kiosk for this stage, test stage. Um. I, I may be misunderstanding. Are, are you uh, asking, this is, will yeah. this? In line number you, four. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Oh, to run it, yes, as part of the test stage, yes. Yeah. Um, Denver, 
Um, do you have any comments on that? I, th I think the question is, will this affect the core DNS? Um, so th maybe let me step back. So the dashboard is a custom view of status information from multiple places. It's not just GitLab, but we source the data from multiple places. Um, the upstream, we have our own uh, status repository that has an API that we, we uh, combine all the information and it's retrieved from there. So this is not a specific view of the stages. It's, you do see it's similar build, deploy, test, but the, uh, they're not exact names. We could name these anything. Um, so it's not exactly specific to GitLab, but I think you're asking if, if the PR is merged, will the test column for core DNS then show uh, yes, these uh, badges? Okay. Yes. So Den Denver, is that something you can respond to? It won't yet. We haven't. Yeah. yeah, not yet. We haven't enabled the test column yet. So. Yeah, I, I think there may be, uh, that's what I was thinking, Denver. So it seems like there's probably another step before. So this is enabling it within the GitLab pipeline, but uh, because of the disabling it in the past, there's some other stuff that we'll need to do to enable this on the dashboard side. Okay, yeah. Fine, but it will uh, run on the GitLab, right? Yes, it'll be on the GitLab, and once that's passing, then um, we can focus on enabling it. Uh, okay, I understand, yeah. yeah, thanks. And we can follow up with you on that offline, because there's uh, probably some items that we want to talk about where it's going to go, rather than going into, it, it's basically not going to show up on production from the start. We have multiple environments. But we can follow up with you on that and we'll, as we're testing. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Yep. Thanks, All Taylor. Right. This is very helpful. Uh, I'll take your advice and uh, reach out to the individual projects. And uh, we'll keep lurking in here as we come out of the maintenance phase. And we look forward to contributing chaos as a general stage for whatever we do here in this group. Thank you. Sounds great. Thank you. All right. So next item, um, overview of the integration testing for the CNF conformance test suite. And that's Watson and myself. Uh, what we don't have in here, Watson, um, is a quick intro to the CNF conformance suite. You want to give it, or give... do you want me to give it? <laughs> <laughs> you can go ahead. I've been talking yeah. for a while. So, yeah, the CNF um, conformance suite is a, uh, a a bunch of software that is made to see if a CNF, which is a cloud native network function, is compliant. Now there's multiple aspects to that, um, but basically it's trying to see if some networking functionality or some networking software is cloud native. Now there's a bunch of principles that go along that and um, Taylor's displaying some of those there. Um, compatibility, compatibility, statelessness, security, scalability, uh, configuration lifecycle, observability, um, installability and hardware uh, resource and scheduling. Um, historically, some of those things within the network world um, were incompatible with uh, cloud native. Um, a lot of that is uh, not automated, not elastic, and not a bunch of these other properties. So the conformance suite is meant to help users uh, and within this space that would be the service providers like telcos like a Verizon or AT&T or something like that 
to be able to see if a network function that they purchased or if it's open source that they downloaded and installed is compliant um, and cloud native, let's say. So along the, si the same lines as maybe the uh, sauna buoy and the conformance uh, suite for Kubernetes itself and seeing if a flavor of Kubernetes uh, is conformant to what uh, what Kubernetes was meant to be. Um, that's it. Um, does anyone have any questions for that? Okay, we can go to the next slide. So uh, the conformance test suite uh, itself needs to be tested. And another thing I forgot to mention is the CNF conformance test suite is a CNCF initiative. It's not a project. It's a CNCF initiative. It's still open source and everything like that. Um, but um, as I was saying, it's a test suite and it's kind of weird because well, to think about it, the test suite itself needs to be tested. So supplying, say, sample CNFs and on one of the CNS we use happens to be CoreDN, uh, Core DNS is the first one that we're using as a test as a layer seven application layer uh, network function. The uh, test suite, the conformance test suite is a, a CLI right now. So everything's at the command line. And so our, our test suite has to test the CLI. It has to install CNS and it has to test the CLI. And we're calling that um, the integration testing. We don't do, we're not doing much um, unit testing right now within the suite. Uh, next slide. So for the, the conformance suite, we're right now we're using Travis and everything uh, that we're doing can be seen inside the Travis YAML. Um, let's see what else we're we within the, the Travis YAML Travis installs uh, Crystal the lang the language that the CNF conformance suite is written in is, is Crystal and we're going to talk about that a little bit uh, later and then we have to manually install Golang we have to install Golang in order to install Kind and use that to of course install the network function to create the, the Kubernetes cluster and to install the network function in. And then we run the integration test, which is uh, just the command crystal spec. Uh, the net, and then um, I guess we can go to the next uh, slide. So crystal is, uh, it's similar to Ruby. So it's made for humans, it's easy to read. Um, the communities that were that are um, out there that are familiar with maybe dynamic languages like Python or Ruby would, and within the CICD community would be more familiar with it and may find it easier to use. Um, it's statically typed and compiled, so in that sense, it's similar to a Golang and um, Travis. Uh, we were very familiar with it just. Um, setting up all the complementary projects to the CNCFCI. Uh, so we just reach for Travis. Um, we're probably, we're not tied to Travis. We're probably going to change the GitHub Actions pretty soon. And um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So any uh, questions? Is there a, uh, this is Ed from Packet. Is there a corresponding mm -hmm. set of interoperability tests that's also going on, perhaps in a different project? So when you say interoperability, you maybe you're saying maybe platform type tests, or what do you mean by that? Um, I'm thinking more of the uh, uh, in addition to testing conformance with the specification, you demonstrate that two. Uh, conforming applications can actually talk to one another. Right. So we were calling, so within the network function world, we were calling that a use case. So if we were to say, 
um, take a core DNS and then say, maybe try to use it with a uh, some other layer two CNF that uses VPP for, for instance. Um, and we would take both of those and put them together. The CNF test bed um, has a bunch of use cases and we wanted to be able to maybe grab some of those in the future. Um, there's lots of use cases out there and we wanna have a strong narrative to be able to test multiple, um, what we call CNFs that together, which would make a use case. So yeah, the answer is yeah, it's in the future that, um, that we'll be looking at that though. The CNF test bed is, is where we would test use cases right now though. Okay, thanks very much. That, that answers mm -hmm. the question. Okay, anyone else? Okay, I think that's it then. Okay, I'm happy to uh, start up here. I'm Ed Vilmedi from Packet. Uh, Packet is, as of about a month ago, an Equinix company. Uh, we just got acquired, so a few changes coming my way, but nothing specific of uh, uh, nothing specific to note. Um, the uh, project that I've been doing for the past couple of years is called Works on ARM. It's focused on uh, ARM compatibility for various uh, projects quite notably for CNCF projects. So next slide gives a quick overview of things. So I've been following the CNCF uh, ARM dashboard and trying to figure out where to put energy in to um, improve the state of things. So I spent about an hour before this call just walking through each of these projects. And this is a working document uh, so far. Um, the good news is that Core DNS, uh, which was mentioned earlier, is an exemplary project with, uh, as far as I can tell from everything I can see, full support in their current release for ARM systems. And therefore, uh, CI testing on top of that um, should have a very good chance of success. For many of the others, um, and there's details all through here, um, there are one or another issues involved uh, typically in the build process. So in the, in the CI part of CI CD, um, where the infrastructure that's available to the individual projects does not easily lend itself to building binaries for multiple architectures. That's not completely true everywhere. There was at least one place where I saw a project distributing ARM and uh, S390 binaries. So they had some multi-architecture capability, but typically in my experience with other project development, there's a somewhat sometimes messy build process that spits out a binary for x86 and that to re-architect it for spitting out binaries for multiple architectures takes a bit of work. So there's a bit of work ahead of us. Um, the Prometheus is another example. So um, the CI process produces a, uh, a, a binary or, or can be coerced to produce a binary. But uh, one of the uh, downstream consumers of those binaries is uh, registries. And up until relatively recently, not every registry, and I'm looking at um, Quay right now, had full multi-architecture uh, manifest support. And so there's been some delays in getting full architectural uh, diversity uh, as a result of that. I, I don't wanna go into lots of these in lots of detail and I don't have all the details yet, but what I do know is that um, I'm going to recommend to the Works on ARM project uh, folks at ARM that we go back to each one of these uh, core projects and um, understand a little bit better uh, what their limits are and how they could be improved and see what we can do now that we have a pretty good baseline from the CI process 
just to see what we can do to uh, urge some of these things forward, either with providing build resources, providing um, manpower for uh, projects or what have you, uh, to bring each of them and all of them up to as good a state as Core DNS seems to be in right now. And with that, I will take any questions. I'll just comment that this is similar in some ways to the chaos uh, question of how do you reach uh, all the projects. And uh, my experience to date has been you reach all the projects by reaching out to each of the projects. And there's no necessarily easy way to reach them all at once, but sometimes you have projects like CNCFCI, they give you some visibility into what's actually going on. Um, and the suitability and maturity of them for taking on additional work. But it's not, there's not really a single centralized uh, right. uh, knob that you can twist to make something new. Um, thanks, Ed. Yeah, that really helps. And also the uh, new CNCF services desk, and that's something that we can all, someone can approach maybe um, as a common way, but that may be futuristic. Right, so but, um, it really helps in this comment, yeah. Yeah, it's the, the, the experience I've had has been in, you, know, you, you find the issues for each of the projects, you read some of them to see what they're actually doing and see how you know, receptive they are and see where they stand in terms of project maturity. And then you start to chip away sort of one at a time to figure out you know, which of these potentially 10 projects, although really ONAP doesn't fit exactly here. Say which of the nine projects has the most likelihood of being in a spot where you could describe a, a port or a test that would make a difference to their, to everyone's lives. That helps, Ed, yeah, I'll reach out and um, let's see how it goes. Yep, please do. I uh, should be easy to find, but if you, it's just edit packet.com. Yep. All right. Thanks. Okay, good. Okay, we can advance the slide. I'm done here. Oh, Ed, I was asking, um, and I was apparently muted. Um, are the no binaries built? Or are you referring to artifacts during the CI pipelines? I'm referring to artifacts from the original distribution. So mm -hmm. in cases, for instance, Envoy, Jaeger, uh, Linkerd, um, it may be the case that the code compiles for 64-bit ARM, but they, the project itself does not do that compilation and does not release those artifacts as part of their official build process. Okay. Um, so that's, that seems to be in sync with what we were saying as well. Um, we did find some areas where things were built, but maybe not released and other, other, um, items on, if you go and look at their systems versus what's published. Um, but the, the goal that you're talking about was something that we were wanting on the CNCFCI so that we could do integrations directly for each of the platforms and, and found the same problems. So I, I think getting those projects to have artifacts published and the status for all the platforms uh, publicly available is a good goal that would be helpful for many projects. Um, and I think one of the things that we were looking at beyond that was how do you get them to publish and have, this would kind of be like that maybe onboarding for chaos or arm or anything, making it easy to publish because you maybe follow a, a spec that says, we're gonna always say the architecture, we're gonna give artifact URLs and other information. There's no real standard around that, but I, I think that there's some value in maybe pursuing that. 
I agree. There's certainly um, support that needs to happen um, in both directions. Um, it really helps for projects to see customers or partners or other folks pulling and asking for things. And as well, you have to do a certain amount of pushing and um, uh, providing requests for uh, looking at code and and other sorts of uh, artifacts, you know, artifacts that can help things out. Generally speaking, projects that are written in Go should have a relatively easy time of it, as long as they have at least some conception that they're building for more than one. But often the default assumption of people in the world is that there's one computer out there and it's a virtual machine and it's an Intel virtual machine which is different from, you know, the actual world that we actually live in. Yep. I, I'll follow up with you. I'd, I'd like to talk more about maybe some uh, ways to move forward on um, getting more projects to, to build and publish. I'd be happy with that. And uh, like I say, we've made a whole bunch of progress, but uh, there's more progress to be made. I'd look forward to I can share this uh, worksheet. It's a working document. So if that's a helpful start or just a helpful spike in the ground as a way of having something to talk about where we stand and what the status is and what the next step would be, I think that might be a good good way to go. Yeah, sounds great. And, and we have some, um, sh some data too that we can share based on our research. All right. I think that's it. If there's no other questions or comments, topics. Thanks everyone. Thanks, Jared. You're welcome. The next meeting is um, scheduled for Tuesday, April 28th, same time, 12 p.m. Pacific. I would add Thanks only everyone. one. I would add only one thing before everyone goes. Um, before that meeting on April 1st, there's an online conference called Virtual Rejects. Uh, Rejects uh, was to have been held at the same time as KubeCon. Oh, actually the weekend before for everyone's paper who was rejected from KubeCon. Uh, this is a, a fringe festival style event. Um, I don't know entirely all of the details of it, but it's some number of days away and should be of interest. Thanks for that. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Yeah.